the laws that are being passed or have been passed are leading the way. I don't necessarily think the populace is necessarily leading the way. I think if you look at Earth geologically, I mean, we've had periods of ice, periods of no ice, periods of back and forth. I think what is not clear is how much of that is caused by us. Much of the Earth's past may be showing us where our future is going. Some of the Earth's long-term past has included times without ice caps or glaciers. Indeed, the Earth is said to be slowly exiting its last mini ice age from the 17th through 19th centuries. But recently, our warming seems to be speeding up. Scientists believe this is due in some part to the human element. Adding carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere both act like a blanket sending heat back down to the Earth's surface. This year, nowhere has this felt more strongly than around the Arctic and Alaska. Decreasing sea ice is having a profound impact on the walrus population, forced to squeeze onto beaches instead of ice fields. NBC's Lee Cowan has more. The midnight sun is finally setting here in the Arctic, but as the summer wanes and the dark winter months approach, something isn't right. It's warm now, it should have been like snow on the ground. Jim Tazruk has lived along the Chukchi Sea most of his life and thought he'd seen everything the Arctic had to offer until he saw this. Those are all walrus? Yeah. All walrus. Tens of thousands of walruses resting on the beach instead of their traditional ice floes. A warning sign, say scientists, that the walrus's icy environment is warming up fast. They prefer to use the sea ice offshore if they can, but when it's gone, then they really don't have it, uh, any choice but to come to shore. A report out this month shows it's the third lowest Arctic ice level in over 30 years. We're really seeing an Arctic in the midst of a very rapid change, and right now uh, there seems to be no signs that it's stopping. And for the native Inupiat people who live here, that's frightening. Scientists tell us that there's global warming going on. And... Do you believe them? Yeah, I believe them. Walruses need the ice to rest on in between feeding. Much like polar bears, they can't swim forever. And on land, the risk of a stampede could kill young calves. Last year, hundreds were crushed by their easily startled mothers as they lumbered back into the sea for safety. So why here specifically? Why Point Lang? Scientists aren't so sure. And just how long the walruses will stay, or if they come back next year, is anybody's guess. You think the walrus will be able to adapt? I hope so. What if they can't? We're in a lot of trouble. Bellwethers of a changing environment in a place where summer is lingering too long. It's not just the coast seeing change. As I saw firsthand across the Canadian border along White Pass, you'll find rivers running fast, but not much ice nearby. More land is being exposed, leading to even more warming. It's no wonder that in Alaska gift shops, you'll find shirts like these. Global warming isn't a theory here anymore, it's reality. Rising sea levels will lead to big changes around the Bay Area within our lifetimes. Now, you may not notice those changes as quickly as they're happening right now in Alaska, but local scientists say, as those changes arrive here, you will notice the difference. Over the next 50 to 100 years, that the sea level will rise about a foot or something like that. And that's looking at the glass half full. On the high end of the scale, some believe we could see a two to three foot rise in sea level. That means more damage from future winter storms, which will pack a bigger and more inland punch. It's Silicon Valley technology like Google's Liquid Galaxy that perhaps gives us our best sneak preview of what the future could bring to the Bay Area. So here we are inside Liquid Galaxy's virtual laboratory of the Bay Area. Here you can look at the landmarks around downtown San Francisco or perhaps fly out to the Golden Gate Bridge, where if you look closely, you can see even the ocean textures moving. These are the same areas that will be reacting to sea level change within our lifetime. 
At Google, we specialize in creating the tools that allow other people to put their data on, to visualize and, and to tell a story with complex data. With Google Earth serving as the platform, highly detailed animations like these run from USGS data. They show what the Bay Area might look like once climate change starts to take hold. What stands out the most to me uh, is just uh, how much of the Bay Area will be affected. So how will the Bay Area look with sea level change factored in or if powerful winter storms damage key levees and infrastructure? Let's start in the North Bay. Future flooding would impact areas near Sonoma Airport, east to Napa Airport, and south to San Pablo Bay. Areas near the Delta and locations downstream of the Ross Valley watershed are at increased risk for flooding. In the South Bay, flying out from San Jose, you can see areas just north of the airport over to Fremont being affected by a one and a half foot sea level rise. This extends westward to Eastern Mountain View, a rise that impacts Moffett Field and several tech companies. In the East Bay, areas from 880 West facing the bay are at risk from sea level rise. This goes from Fremont into Hayward to Newark and all the way up to Oakland Airport. For San Francisco, areas near AT&T Park and the Embarcadero could be affected. And as we head east over the bay to Oakland and Berkeley, marina areas would find rising sea levels leading to some real flooding concerns. Of all the areas around the bay, it's the Lower Peninsula's 101 corridor from East Palo Alto, north to Redwood City, nearly all of Foster City, all the way to SFO that could see the biggest impact. What makes this so amazing is that people who, who live here can actually zoom to their backyard um, and see how they will be affected. It definitely um, begs the question, what happens if these levees fail? In the mountains, we get a lot of snow and that's a great storage of water for us because that snow stays there from December all the way to, you know, March, April, May, starts to melt, feeding our rivers and, and giving us the water we need. But if it didn't come as snow and came as rain, because the, the temperature is warmer, then we get all that water at the same time. And we don't have the reservoir capacity right now to do anything with that, except let it go into the ocean. And then what are we gonna do in summer when we need the water for agriculture and for watering our lawns and for our swimming pools? So for the Bay Area, the future could hold an unfortunate fate of too much water nearing our doorsteps during the winter, yet not enough to drink during summer months. You would expect in, in a warmer world to see changes in, in how we get our water. And I think for the Bay Area and for California in general, this is one of the largest impacts. Coming up, planning for the future. We're taking it very seriously. From airports to public perception. I'm Scott Budman. Coming up, how Silicon Valley technology is leading the fight against climate change.